Hi, welcome to the Canon Academy. This is uh, my homeschool area, part three, and how I use it, puzzles. Um, you will just be hearing my voice and occasionally see my hand and some movement while I move from puzzles to puzzles. So, first of all, um, these are some of our character puzzles. This happens to be Winnie the Pooh. And the children can match the pieces and where they go when they first start doing puzzles by the pictures. I also have another one that is Disney. And as you see, they have pictures also that help the children match. The next um, easiest group of puzzles to do are um, peg puzzles, which have little pegs to hold them. Um, these happen to be shapes, and in the shape it tells them what they are. And what I did was I went ahead and wrote the word on the back of the piece so they can say, oh, these are the same letters and they match here. I also have in peg thing, this one should make noise, but I did not put batteries in it. Um, so they just, again, match different things. And this one has various different types of transportation. In the PEG um, puzzle group, I also have some numbers, 0 to 9. And again, it tells them the word 7, and they can count and see that it's 7 or 6. The next easiest group to do are these old play school puzzles that I picked up at various yard sales. Now, something that I did with these, and I got the idea from a Facebook um, post I had seen, is I have sight words from our readers in them. This one says baby, and then the piece itself says baby. So they can put it back where it goes, which is a little easier for them once they have taken all the pieces out and stuff. And I did the same with the 10-piece Pocahontas puzzle, and I have a few other puzzles. So here it says the word C, and the back of this piece says C. So it's a fun way for them to not only learn hand-eye coordination, how to put puzzles together, but a fun way to learn their sight words as well. Um, then I have these two number puzzles, and these are old. I've had these about 20 years and when you take the pieces out I have written the word left and put left on this piece so either side they turn it to they can see the word and match it and on the numbers I went ahead and wrote the number down for how many dots there are and did it on the back so it looks the same Again, it's just a faster way for them to learn um, things. As you can tell, this puzzle's fairly old. It's, it's kind of beat up from all the children that have used it. And behind each letter, there is a picture and a word. And this is one of the favorite puzzles. Okay, next up, I've had these for over 20 years. And I believe I bought them through um, Discovery back when you did toy parties for them. And it has various different fish on this one. And it tells you the name of the fish. Barracuda. Trigger. Bass. So they can hold them in their hands. Fill the different shapes. Look at the colors. And they can learn what type of fish it is. And I call this science. Same here, peacock 
and there's the word owl and a lot of these are easy for them because they know what they are and the ones they don't well that's learning different types of birds different types of farm animals and again it tells you goose it will say pig so they're learning their words along with the different types of animals and um, things this one is various different wild animals turtle mouse of course that's a cat and we also have different bugs a moth they probably know this is already a ladybug we have a grasshopper a butterfly a unicorn beetle so again those are I would call science lessons now moving on with the puzzles I'm going to bring around some cardboard puzzles I have that I use um, I have not had these out too much with the littles I have at the moment but we are getting there so this is animals of the Amazon and as you can see it lists the names of the animals now on this particular one um, these are like higher numbers I have put numbers on them and numbers on the piece and it ended at 120 And I start at number five. And let's see, I think I might be counting by fives. Yes, because there's ten. So this would be counting by fives along with learning. So that would be math, along with learning animals of the Amazon, which could be considered not only science learning species but social studies learning about the world and then we have the animals of australia same thing they had the words out here telling you what they are a wallaby a cassowary um crocodile things like that <coughs> then under them i have sight words for at at so they can match them all back into the right spaces this one is just for fun spider-man and friends but again hidden under the pieces these are math problems 0 plus 2 equals 2 and the math piece that matches so not only are they having fun but they're learning to match the pieces back together and learning math problems without even realizing it. Here's another one. And this one, I chose to do the letters. Capital A and lowercase a. And they just match it back together. So fun, but they're learning their letters. Animals of Africa. And again, it tells you the name, a crowned crane, a hippopotamus, a pink flamingo. Over here you have a bongo, a chimpanzee. So they're learning about the world and they're counting. And this one, I believe we're going to be counting by twos. If we take the next piece out, we'll know for sure. Yes, there's four and four. easy way to hide learning then we have pictures of landmarks we have Capitol Hill in Washington DC the Space Needle in Seattle Washington the arch in st. Louis Mount Rushmore 
the Alamo in San Antonio, Texas, and of course the Statue of Liberty. Oops, and she's missing part of herself. Like I said, these puzzles are old. I bought these used from a woman. Um, I got all these cardboard ones for like five, ten dollars. This one will be counting by threes. If we turn the next one, it's going to be six. So not only are they learning the landmarks, which could be considered geography and social studies, but they'll be learning math, counting by threes. And here we have our solar system. And yes, it's got Pluto on there, but I do teach the children that right now Pluto is still just considered a dwarf planet. And let's see if I hit anything under here. Yes, we're counting by tens. So 10, 20. So they're learning science and their planets. They're learning what they look like, approximately where they might be located in the solar system, and they're learning to count by tens. That ends it for our puzzle segment. Oh, no it doesn't, I'm sorry. I'm going to include this little maze toy in here. And they have this little magnetic stick. And this helps with hand-eye coordination. And they have to take the little balls through the maze and get them in the center. And this is one of the favorite toys. Um, I need to get more of these because there's only one. And all you parents out there know what that means when you only have one. So this concludes our uh, my homeschool area um, puzzles part three. If you like this video and found it enjoyable you, and had any useful information, please like and subscribe below. And if you'd like to see more of my videos and know when they're coming out, hit the bell and it will let you know. All of these things are entirely free to you as far as being able to watch the videos. Um, the puzzles can be bought at yard sales, um, through any educational stores, um, eBay, Amazon, and um, some of the Facebook pages, Marketplace, and homeschool sites. Um, so, again... If you like this video, hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thank you from the Canon Academy.